Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to your channeled message reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're doing well, feeling safe and feeling blessed because you are. So you guys, you know, for, for the last few days, um, I have been channeling messages, and I, I believe a good amount of you guys in the collective are going to resonate with this one. Um, I urge you to be prayerful. Through all of your battles, you need to pray to God because this battle does not belong to you. This, this battle is for God, it's not for you. But of course, we're here in the physical realm battling these demonic forces that are influencing individuals to carry out their, their evil work, right? Their evil agenda. You have to put God at the forefront of, your, of this spiritual battle. You have to. You have to put God at the forefront of your life. And what I've been seeing for many of you is that the devil is trying to cause a premature death, a premature ending for you. The, bat, the, the devil is trying to cause an ending for your journey. He does not want you to continue your journey uh, because many of you, you've come very far along your journey. And the further you get along your journey, the closer you get to God. The closer you get to God, the further you are in his, in his light which means you carry a lot of light and light is power. That's what makes you very powerful, your closeness to God. And so this is allowing you to reach new levels and high places along your journey. And that is what is threatening the kingdom of darkness. The devil does not want your forward movement. The devil does not want your prosperity, your growth, your progress. He doesn't want any forward movement for you. He wants to cause an ending to your journey. And so what I'm seeing for many of you is the enemy is trying to get you tangled up. The enemy is trying to get you tangled up in deceitful contracts. Some of you are, are contract bound where things aren't going right, but you can't get up and leave. You can't get up and separate from this person, place, or thing that is doing you wrong because you're bound by contract. Some of you are bound by documents and paperwork. Some of you have been waiting for documents and paperwork, uh, but there is a block, there is a delay, and all you can do is sit and wait. But as you're sitting and waiting, I urge you to pray. As the spiritual battle is intensifying, your prayers to God needs to be intense. The more intense this spiritual battle is, the more intense your prayer needs to be. If you have to pray traditionally, if you have to get down on your knees and beg and plead and cry out to God, do it. Pray consistently. Pray in the morning. Pray at night. Pray in the afternoon, in the evenings. You don't have to pray just once. Prayer is what you do when you are facing spiritual battle. That is your defense. That is how you defend yourself. That is how you protect yourself, through prayer. Those of you who are in binding situations where you feel bound, where you feel restricted, you feel limited, you feel like things are out of your hands, out of your control, you could be under a spiritual stronghold. And so the only way to break free from spiritual strongholds is to pray and fast. There are many ways that you can fast. You don't just have to, you know, uh, 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 starve yourself, right? Especially if your health and diet uh, doesn't allow you to fast. There's different ways that you can fast. You can withhold, like let's say, for example, you like to drink Coca-Cola every day. You can't go without Coca-Cola. You can do a Coca-Cola fasting. Let's say you love to eat chocolate. You love chocolate. You need chocolate. You can do a, a Coca-Cola, you know, you can do a chocolate fasting, right? To fast is to withhold something that you truly want, that you truly like, to show your desperation for God's intervention. And God knows the heart of man. If you're fasting from something that you know you don't really like, you know what I'm saying? You know that you don't really need it and you're trying to be slick, you're trying to be, you know, cunning, God is not going to, he's not going to hear your cry. To fast is when you withhold something that you really, really love. You withhold yourself. It is to show your desperation. It is a cry to God. Okay? And then you have people who whose health and diet does allow them to fast. 
and they can fast from from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. or from 6 a.m. To, to 6 p.m. There's different types of fasting. Do what your health and diet allows. I'm not a doctor, but I'm just telling you that these are the remedies. These are the solutions when you are on the battlefield, battling these demonic forces that are hosting inside of people to carry out the devil's evil agenda. You pray. You pray without ceasing. If only you can see what takes place in the spiritual realm when you pray. It defeats the devil. Prayer is what defeats the devil. The devil cannot stand prayer. It is so simple to pray, but it is oh so powerful. Because for many of you in the collective, you are rising. You are a rising star. You are accomplishing big things. You are reaching great destinations along your spiritual journey. You are progressing. You are accelerating. You're progressing at a fast rate. And that is what is threatening the devil. And so he wants to cause a death. He wants to cause an ending. He wants to terminate your journey. So that you don't walk in your purpose and fulfill your destiny. The destiny that God has appointed you to fulfill. They're trying to put you in chains. They want to restrict you. They want to make you feel pushed against the wall. They want you to surrender and accept defeat. They want you to not continue this path that you've been on and to go down a different path. Because the path that you've been on is leading you to big and incredible blessings. The work that you have been doing, your servitude to God is defeating the kingdom of God. Your servitude to the kingdom of God is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You have done immense work for the kingdom of God. And there is much more work that God has appointed you to do. And the enemy is trying to create a blockage, an ending, a termination. The enemy is trying to restrict you in some way, shape, or form. But the enemy will not win because God is securing you. Each time the enemy tries to trap you, imprison you, get you locked up and chained up. There is, there is, there is an illusion here. The enemy wants you to believe that you have no choice but to give up. That you have no choice but to accept defeat. It is all an illusion. It is all deception. The devil and his agents, your enemies, your adversaries, they have no power to cause you an ending. Some of you are being threatened. They could be using threats against you. Lots of fear tactics here. They do not have the power to cause you an ending. The devil is trying to cast an illusion to get you to believe that you have no choice but to surrender, that you have no choice but to give up in defeat. And I don't care what, what, what situation the devil has trapped you in. I want you to know that the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, can remove you out of it. I don't care how deep that hole is that the enemy has dug and tried to bury you in. The Lord will save you and remove you from that, that hole, that grave that the enemy has dug for you. I don't care what prison cell they have put you in. The Lord and Savior will unlock you and free you out of that prison cell. I don't care what contracts, what contracts they have binded you in. There's no contract that the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, cannot void and terminate. I have been in situations where people have tried to keep me contract bound. And the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, terminated that contract, showed me loopholes in that contract, or even exposed secrets from my enemies and so they had no choice but to terminate the contract absolutely some of you who are contract bound there could be loopholes in that contract some of you you know you believe you're contract bound but some of you could have signed documents that weren't even legitimate in the first place i channeled that message just last night 
There's someone here where you haven't you have people trying to restrict you because you signed a contract. That contract is inauthentic. It's not legitimate. It's a counterfeit. There's no real imprisonment. And even for those of you where you signed a contract, there's a loophole in that contract that could get you out of it. And then for others of you where, where you signed a contract and there's no loopholes in that contract and it's a legitimate contract, the person who you sign, wh whoever that party is, who, who you signed the contract with, they have secrets. They have secrets. And so if you escalate this into, you know, a legal case, they will be so scared because they have secrets. They don't want this to go in front of the judge. And so what they will do is, is release you, terminate the contract. That has happened to me before. There have been times where I have signed contracts with people who were very deceitful. And they thought that they could keep me bound. And the Lord exposed what they were doing behind closed doors. And I was able to use it against them. They were so scared. They didn't know how I, how I knew these things about their organization. And they certainly didn't want to escalate it into a case where I end up exposing them in court. So they quickly terminated the contract and released me because I knew too much about them. There is a way out. There is a pathway that God has paved for you. There's a loophole. There's no chains. Jesus Christ is known. He is famous for being a chain breaker. That is why he is known to be the Lord and Savior. He saves. He rescues. There's no chains that Jesus Christ cannot break you free out of. I don't care what binding situation you, you are in. I don't care what restrictions and limitations you are facing. The Lord will rescue you. If you believe in him, if you count on him, and if you pray faithfully, there's no point in praying to the Lord if you don't have faith. Faith is what drives your, your prayer forward. Your faith is what makes God hear you. It's an illusion. They want to get you to believe that you have no choice but to surrender, that you have no choice but to submit, that you have no choice but to experience defeat. They, they think that they have you all tied up. Oh, no, they don't. Because you're going to pray. You're going to pray without ceasing, and the Lord is going to untie you. The Lord is going to free you from this entanglement. Right when the enemy thinks that they have gotten you, the Lord is going to show you another way out. And he's going to continue to do this for you over and over and over and over and over because you are secured. Through the Lord, you are secured and you will always be secured. The enemy will never be able to trap you. The enemy will never be able to bind you. Right when they think they've got a hook on you, right when they think that they've caught you on something, the Lord is going to show you another way out. There are numerous pathways out of this situation. Your adversaries will have no choice but to release you. Some of them think that, they're, that, that, that they can restrict you. Oh, no, no, no. The Lord is going to restrict them. Your Lord is going to, the Lord is going to restrict your enemies. He's going to restrict them so, so powerfully that they will have no choice but to release you. So that he can release them. This hold, this hold, this stronghold that they want to place over you. Oh, no, no, no. The Lord is going to place them under his hold. The Lord is going to restrict them. The Lord is going to limit them and bind them up. And they will have no choice but to release you if they want freedom. They will have no choice but to give you freedom if they want freedom. As a child of God, God has blessed you with free will. All of us, as children of God, we all have free will. You are a free-willed child of God. You are not restricted. You are not defeated. You are not limited. You are free. And your journey 
will be successful. God didn't bring you this far for nothing, for you to accept defeat. God has brought you far and he will continue to take you further. You arrived at this destination successfully. God is going to promote you to your next destination successfully. They will have no choice but to release you. I don't know what hole the enemy has dug for you. I don't know what chains the enemy has placed around you. By the power of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your adversaries will have no choice but to release you. If they want to be released. <laughs> the whole time they thought they were digging a grave for you, tying you up in chains, the Lord was watching. They were getting tangled up in chains as well the whole time. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. Tell us more about this message. Judication. Judication. Judication reminds me of the Hierophant. Yes. It reminds me of the Hierophant card. I'm so sorry, you guys. I want you to see this card. This is a very serious reading. Um, judication reminds me of the Hierophant. The Hierophant are people who are in leadership roles and positions. The decisions that they make, it affects the people. Of course, with judication, you literally see a judge. This could be a court case for some of you. It could be a legal case. Um, but with judication, these are higher-ups. People in high places who make decisions that affects the masses. Expectation, waiting, and courtship. Judication, clarified judication message. Journey. Mature woman. The Lord is guiding you and instructing you. It's almost as if he's, he's commanding you to move forward. The Lord is not even taking the situation seriously. <laughs> There's nothing big for God. There's nothing too big for God, right? He is the creator of the whole universe and beyond. You're taking the situation to be so big. You know, I feel like some of you are in situations where your adversaries have really convinced you that they have power, that they have the upper hand. They want you to believe that you have to uh, go by their rule, play by their rule. <laughs> the Lord is not even taking your adversaries seriously. A lot of them are being demonically influenced in the first place. And that is why they that is that is why they lose instantly. Because as a child of God, God has given you power and authority over the kingdom of darkness and all that comes from it. So therefore, you have power and authority over the devil. Therefore, you have power and authority over demons. Therefore, you have power and authority over the people who are playing the role of your adversary. 
who are trying to challenge you. You have power and authority over them because there are demonic forces that they are connected to, demonic forces that are coming from the kingdom of darkness, and you have power and authority over the kingdom of darkness and all that comes from it, which means anybody who is connecting themselves to the kingdom of darkness, you also have power and authority over them. God is calling you to move forward. You are the chariot, by the way. I know the chariot card isn't out here, but you are the chariot and I'm gonna show you. Your journey will always be successful because God is standing with you. And if God is for you, who could possibly be against you? Surrendering is not a choice, it's not an option, it shouldn't even be something on your mind. Defeat is not a choice, it's not an option, it shouldn't even be a thought. As long as God is for you, right? Scripture says, if God is for me, who could be against me? If God is for you, who could be against you? Who? No one. Some of you could be in situations where, where you have someone who is trying to remove you from a position that God has established you in. God appointed you to that person, place, or thing. God chose you for that role or position. He established you there. So who could, who could possibly take you out, remove you out, out of the position that God has established you in? Who? No one can. He has secured you. You are firm. You are as firm as an anchor. You're the chariot. The chariot is a success card. The chariot is all about forward movement. Hmm. One second, you guys. I'm looking this up. Yes, let me see here. Let me see if I can find it. I know it's romance. It's Romans. I'm trying to find the scripture. Yes, it's Romans. It's Romans. It's Romans eight. It's Romans eight chapter. It's Romans chapter eight verse thirty one. And it says, "What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us?" If God is for us, who can be against us? God is securing you like an anchor. Some of you are in positions. God has established you in roles and positions. He has appointed you to people, places, and things. And now you have some agent of the devil who thinks that they can remove you from the position that God has called you to be in. Who thinks that they can remove you out of positions that God has established you in? And they will fail. They will be defeated. They will not win. And God will use them as a lesson. Not as a lesson, but as an example. God will use your adversaries as an example. By them working against you, they are really working against the will of God because God was the one who called you. He has called you to do something. He has appointed you to a person, place, or thing. He has established you in a role or position. It was all by God that you are where you are at. So anyone who's trying to remove you, anyone who's trying to cause an ending, 
they better be careful because they are trying to work against God's will. And that is impossible. God's will will always be done. If God is for you, who could be against you? God is saying, let this go and move forward. They're not going to catch you. They want to they catch you in a net. They want to put you in chains. They're not going to catch you. They're not going to hold you back. Some of you have people who are trying to destroy what God has established for you. But what they don't realize that everything that you have worked for, the work that you have done, what you have established was built on a firm foundation. What they're refusing to see is that they, they can't destroy your establishment. They can't destroy what you have worked for. They can't destroy your work. They can't destroy your empire. They can't destroy your project. They can't destroy your business. They can't destroy your reputation. They can't destroy your job. They can't because it was built on a firm foundation, on a strong foundation. It was God who laid out the foundation for you to build and establish what you have worked for. Your foundation is God. And so because of that, everything that you have built on this foundation remains standing. It will not fall. You understand? So imagine a house. What happens when you build a house on a, on a weak foundation, on a bad foundation? Everything that was built on top of that foundation, it comes crashing down. Some of you have worked. You've done so much work. You've come so far. You have established so much for yourself. You are the builder. You are the emperor, whether you're a man or woman. You have invested so much of your love, time, and effort. You are the empress. You oversee an empire. You have built so much. You have established so much. Now the enemy thinks that they can destroy your work. <laughs> but the foundation of your work is strong. It is the foundation of God. So what you have established, what you have built, what you have worked for what you have worked on it's not going to fall if anything they should be careful because many of you the people who are trying to take you down their establishment everything that they have built it was built on a false foundation and so it's very easy for their establishment to come crashing and burning down it's very easy for them to lose because of their false foundation. You are firm. You are standing firmly in the light of God. Darkness cannot touch you. Darkness will never touch you. There are times where God will bring us close to darkness to see it, to study it, to grow discernment, but never close enough where it hurts us. This is a learning experience. Many of you, God is showing you that even institutions can't come against you. Even people in high places can't come against you. The Lord is not taking this situation seriously. The Lord is calling you to move forward and continue to pray for him to handle this. You have your whole journey ahead of you. You've come so far and there's still so much more that God has for you. You're being called with the message. Message is communication. You're being instructed. God is commanding you to move forward with the journey card. 
handle your responsibilities, do what you can, but don't take these people seriously. Okay, the mature woman card is here. That is the Empress. That's you. You have a brand new beginning. You're in the energy of the Empress. By the way, the Empress, being the mature woman, is all about abundance, fertility, and fruitfulness. The Empress gives birth to creations. Okay? The Empress gives birth to creations. And so whenever a person shows up in the, in the Empress energy, it tells me that there's something you've been carrying. There's a dream that you've been carrying. That dream has now come to life. There's a creation that you've been carrying that you're now about to produce. There is a goal that you've been carrying and you're now about to accomplish that goal. Whatever you've been carrying, you're about to give birth to it. You're about to produce it. It is manifesting. It is entering. It is, it is coming to fruition. Where you're about to start living it. You're about to start seeing it. You have a brand new beginning, the child. Don't let all of these distractions get to you. Do what you can do. Handle your responsibilities and move forward. Whoever's trying to, to tie you up in something, entangle you in something, they're wasting their time. Do not sit there in defeat. Move forward. Get up and move forward. They can't hold you back. Expectation. Your journey is a threat to the devil. And so he's always going to try to use people to get you caught up in things. But it will, it will never work. Stand in your power. Know your power because you serve the all-powerful God. You have a new beginning. Don't worry about these clowns. You have a new beginning. You have new people, places, and things that you're supposed to be coming together with. The lovers and courtship. The lovers is coming together. Courtship is coming together. God is saying, God is saying you should be in, in, in expectation mode. You should be anticipating great things. God has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. The whole time these people were trying to challenge you and do this and do that, God was preparing a brand new beginning for you. And he cannot wait for you to receive it. He cannot wait for you to come together with all of these things that he has created for you. And the individuals trying to tie you up in something, they have no power against you. It's just a bunch of trickery and deceit that they're using here. Poverty. Look, somebody better be careful. Look, somebody's in trouble. There's an official person here. <laughs> There's an official person here. An official person is a professional, someone who holds an office in a company, organization, institution. You will see them in a uniform or suit and tie. They are not confident about going against you. Poverty is to lack. Look, they're concerned. You serve a bigger God. You serve a greater God. I don't care what titles this person holds. I don't care who they are. I don't care what status they have. Your God is far bigger, bigger than they could ever be, bigger than your greatest imagination. There's someone here who is a bit frightened by you. They are a bit intimidated by you and who you are. They lack confidence. There's an insecurity there that they're carrying when it comes to you. Look, occupation. If they know what's good for them, they will just walk away. Occupation, main female, and then sudden wealth. See, they're worried about you. Many of you, you're taking yourself to be small. You're not small. In the spirit, you are as big and gigantic as a mountain. Mountains, can you move a mountain? Only God can move mountains. That's how people see you, a mountain that can't be moved. 
You are unshakable, immovable. God has brought great emphasis on who you are. There's, because you work for him. Occupation is here. Main, female, and occupation. You work for God. You, you serve the kingdom of God, which is the highest ranking kingdom. Therefore, all the other kingdoms, especially the kingdom of darkness, it falls below. That means you always have the upper hand. You are serving the God who created the earth, the heavens, and the whole universe and beyond. The kind of jurisdiction that you carry. Know your jurisdiction. Know your jurisdiction so that no one will convince you that they have jurisdiction over you. The only person who can move you, remove you, or shake you up is the God who positioned you in the first place. Know your jurisdiction. You have an official person here who wants to use their jurisdiction. They have no jurisdiction over you. You are ranking the highest. You have the highest ranking because you're serving the highest kingdom, the kingdom of God. You understand? That's how it works in the spiritual realm. And I've told you guys before, in order for anything to happen in the physical realm, because here on earth, we're living in a physical realm. In order for anything to happen in the physical realm, it must first happen in the spiritual realm. Because, of, because you have a high spiritual ranking, all of this nonsense that these people are trying to do to you, it's not going to come into fruition. It's not going to be manifested in the physical realm. Whatever they're trying to do for you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. In order for anything to happen in the physical realm, it must take place in the spiritual realm. So use, use your spiritual power, the power of God. God has given you power. He has shared his power and strength with you. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. I'll tell you that. There's an official person here who lacks the confidence to face you, who lacks the confidence to come against you. They might have some sort of title that they carry, blah, 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 blah. They don't have any jurisdiction over you. Maybe they have jurisdiction over the, 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 the people in their company or the people in their organization. Okay, that's, that's not you though. <laughs> you understand? You know what I'm saying? So I really want to, and, and um, there's a powerful woman of God, Dr. Cindy Trem. She explains this so well. She explains spiritual rankings so well. I'm going to try to find some of her videos here on YouTube and share it with you guys. If I find it, I might link it in the description box or even share it on the community page. But her name is Dr. Cindy Trem. Let me make sure I'm saying her name right. Yes, Dr. Cindy Trem. She is so gifted and she understands the spiritual realm so, so very well. She is a true teacher when it comes to uh, 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 spiritual warfare and how it even works. There's someone here who isn't even confident. There's an official person here who isn't even confident about coming up against you. because of the work that you do. Whether it's the physical work that you do, whether it's the spiritual work that you do, it's really the spiritual work, it's your servitude to the kingdom of God that makes you physically powerful, that makes you powerful in the physical realm. It's because of your spiritual servitude to God that makes you powerful in the physical realm. So even if you, have a, even if you do have an occupation here on earth, it is because of your spiritual occupation that makes your physical occupation so powerful. In order for anything to happen in the physical realm, it must first happen in the spiritual realm.
That's what makes you so powerful. That's what makes you so abundant. To be abundant is to have more than enough. You have more than enough power. God has given you more than enough power. God has given you more than enough strength. God has given you more than enough intelligence. God has given you more than enough tools and resources. You just got to utilize it. Stop sitting there in pity and defeat. As long as there are no physical chains on you, you're not bound. You're not restricted. These people are, are realizing that they have to be careful with you. Mature man. Change. You are being called to move forward. Don't wait on anybody's answers. Don't wait on any paperwork to arrive. Don't wait on any communication. Pat, move forward. Continue whatever it was that you were initially working on. You're being commanded. You're being instructed to move forward. Mature man and change. Many times in our readings, the mature man is the father. I have seen several, numerous times, countless times in readings where the mature man will represent God. God the father. The mature man is the father. Like the emperor. He is instructing you. God is instructing you to move forward with the plan. Stay focused. Don't worry about those people. There's a lot of trickery here. There's a lot of trickery here. They're telling you things that aren't true. They're giving you documents that aren't legit. They're trying to make something here look real. Like what, whatever this nonsense is, don't pay attention to it. You do your part, but do not submit to these people. Do not submit. Do not, do not accept defeat. Family room. Some of you, you're being called to move unexpected income. You're being called to remove yourself from a particular area, location, or a place. You're being called to move from a place. Take that how it resonates. And maybe that's what you were intending to do, but then you have someone, you have people here trying to hold you back. Keep focused, stay focused on the plans, the initial plan. Don't let anybody change your mind. You are under God's authority. He is instructing you to do something. You do it. It looks like with family room, unexpected income, it's an upgrade. God is trying to give you an upgrade. Yeah, gifts. He's trying to upgrade you. It could be, I feel like you're being called to move from a particular place. Wherever he is relocating you to, it is an upgrade. So if you're being called to like move out of a neighborhood or community, your next neighborhood is going to be a big upgrade. If you're being called to separate from a job, a company, a business, an institution, the next place that God is elevating you to, the next job is going to be a big upgrade. There's something here. He's calling you to move away from something, no matter what somebody's telling you, move, move away from something and let him upgrade you. You even have family room. Family room could represent something that's close in proximity to you. It's an intimate space is what the family room card is. Family room could also represent an apartment unit, an office space, your home. It could be a space in your home. It could be a space at your job but it's a big upgrade here which is why God is telling you to move keep on moving don't sit there waiting on anybody because that's exactly what the enemy wants
you have main mail. There's someone here who's been told to keep an eye on you. Okay. This is where we're really, this is where, because we know the spiritual truth. Okay, so if the devil has an agenda to obliterate your journey and cause a premature ending to your journey, the devil is a spirit. He has no real power here on earth. He has to go through a person, right, in, 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 in flesh and body. He has to go through a person to get the job done. Okay, I've said it before on the channel, the only enemy you have is a devil. But the people who the devil uses, those are your adversaries. Those are the dummies who, who let the devil use them. So there's someone here, I'm telling you, I heard it. There's a man, main male. He's at the forefront of something. Main male is the main male character. He's been, he's been instructed or told to keep an eye on you. The devil sees you as powerful, untamable, unmovable, unshakable. But he can't hold you spiritually. He can't hold you back spiritually. So he's trying to do something in the physical realm. He's using people, places, and things here in the earthly realm to hold you back. There's a man here, main male, message of concern. Look, house. He's connected. He's close to you. He's close in proximity to you. There's a place that God is trying to remove you from because the enemy, they have really surrounded you. They're trying to ambush you so that you will give up. They're trying to ambush you. False person, thief, and then community. Look, this is either like there's a place that you're connected to, maybe whether personally, professionally, the enemy has surrounded you there. They have ambushed you. Okay, but the most that they can do is deceive you. That's the most that they can do. They can't touch you. Many times when the devil is sending his demons at you, when he's sending his demons to you, he tells them, y'all know very well you can't touch that child of God, right? God has said it himself. Touch not my anointed ones. Do my servants no harm. Okay. So even when the devil is orchestrating an attack on you and he's sending his demons to you, he tells them, y'all could do anything but touch that child of God. Y'all know y'all can't touch that child of God, right? You can watch that child of God. You can monitor that child of God. You can plot on that child of God. You can't touch that child of God. The most they can do is torment you, deceive you, create illusions, That's the most that they can do is create illusions, try to scare you, use fear tactics. Don't play the game with these people. Don't play the game. They know they can't touch you. Anybody who, <laughs> if there's one mark, if the enemy tries to put one mark on you, the devil knows what's, what's going to happen to him. Even the devil is under God's authority. When scripture says every knee shall bow, God meant it. Every knee shall bow. Even the devil has to bow down to God. Even the devil has to submit to God. So they can do all of the, you know, this and that, all these games, blah, 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 blah. They can't touch you. They can't mark you. They can't harm you. Don't play games with these stupid people. You have assignments to complete. You have missions to accomplish. You have work to do. There's a man here who has been instructed to keep an eye on you. House. What is this house representing? It's a place that you're connected to. It's an establishment that you're connected to. Personally, casually, professionally, take it how it resonates. He's watching you. False person. He's hiding though. 
or he is keeping things to himself. Like he doesn't want you to know who he really is and what he's being sent to do. Okay. Yeah. What is he being sent to do? Imprison you. He's being called to like, what, what is this that they're doing to you? Hold you back. Imprisonment is to hold someone back, restrict someone. That is what the imprisonment card is. Restricting. He's being called to hold you back in some way, shape, or form. It's not going to work. These people will have to release you. And even if they don't release you, release yourself. As long as there's no chains on, on you, as long as they haven't locked you up somewhere, release yourself. They want you to believe that you're obligated to do this and do this, blah, 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 blah. Don't give mind to the stupid games that these people are playing with you. Like I said, some of you, how you even got in the situation was through a lot of deception. Okay, if it was like, I, I think I said it earlier, some of you. It just gets so deep, like how you even got in this situation. There's a bunch of deception here because I'm going to leave that for another time. Imprisonment, his job, marriage. Okay, fine. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it because it's showing up. So that means I should talk about it. I was going to say some of you, if it's some sort of paperwork that you sign, document, contract, uh, there's a, it, it was a counterfeit. It's not real. It's not legitimate. They just make it they just made it look official. The marriage represents a joint venture, an official partnership, and a contractual agreement. With the marriage is very different from courtship. Courtship is coming together. Like you know, but marriage, when you see the marriage is saying that you have commitments, you can't just get up and leave. Whatever they're, they're using against you, it wasn't even real. Something here is inauthentic. Something here is like illegitimate. They're trying to deceive you. If it is paperwork document, there's something illegitimate about it. They either it's it's either illegitimate or there's loopholes in that in that paperwork, in that document, in that contract. Don't let these people play with you. You just want to waste your time. Distant horizons. Distant Horizons, High Honor. Wealthy Man. Hmm. The Snake. See, something's not right. Something's not right. The snake is a betrayer. Lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating, withholding information. Then you have number nine, the gift. house this house this place is no good whatever this house is representing it's a place that you're connected to Somebody here is using money. There's a wealthy man here. He's using money to his best advantage. 
I'm trying to see how he's doing this. Lady number one. Whoever this wealthy man is, he's in a high place. That's why Distant Horizons showed up. Like, he's in a high place. He has a lot of money. Um, he's the one who's behind this. He's the one who's behind this. He's using money to his advantage. It's like he's paying people. He's paying people to do this to you. He is. He's paying people to try to block you, restrict you, limit you, cause you an ending. The 21 is, is the mountain. The mountain is obstacles. He's paying people to put obstacles in your way. Okay. So he's the main culprit behind this. But who is this wealthy man here? 24 is the heart, okay? Union and harmony. Who is this wealthy man? Hmm. 19 is the tower, institutions organizations, corporations, you know, those big companies, that's what the tower is. 31 is the sun. Illumination. Could be a tower, skyscraper. 25 is the rain, commitments, joint ventures engagements and proposals what in the world there's a man behind this Norton. you're connected to this man or like whether directly or indirectly There's a man here. Let me see here. How are you connected to him? Like there's something, you are connected to him. 24 is the heart, union and harmony. 24, the heart card reminds me of the two of cups, you know, like coming together. You're connected to him in some way or you will be connected to him. I feel like you are already connected to him. That's why he knows who you are. He's the one behind this. Then you have the tower. Is it a tower skyscraper you're connected to? You know, is it some sort of institution, organization, company, corporation, right? 
31 is the sun. You already know this. The sun is illumination. This has already been illuminated to you, okay? 25 is the ring. You have some commitments to this place. You have commitments, something like that. You're connected because the scythe is here. That's the sword. The sword in tarot is represents the truth and clarity. This man is trying to maybe even stop you from coming together. So number two is the clover. The clover is luck and happiness. Why the clover? It's almost like he's trying to suffer you, right? Because the clover is luck and happiness and the bridge is overcoming difficulties. It's almost like he wants to suffer you. He wants to make something difficult for you. This is hatred. This is hatred that this man has for you. Oh, could this be competition? Because 39 is the dice. The dice is taking chances. This man doesn't want to have you as a competition. You're connected to some sort of tower here, skyscraper. But of course, it could represent, like I said, organizations, institutions, companies, corporations. You get what I mean. He doesn't want you to get somewhere or go far because you would be competition. It's almost like people would have a choice between you or him and that's what he doesn't want like he he sees you as competition 39 this man knows that if you step in the picture people are going to choose you because you're the authentic one you're actually good at what you do people will, will choose him and people will choose you and not him and then he will end up failing losing customers losing something because people will go to you This is someone who is like, look, 41 is the well. The well says, look deeper. Like how the water runs deep beneath the well. Look deeper. You have, some of you might have several adversaries, but this one is a big one. This one is someone in a high place. He has power. He has wealth. He has status. He's in a high place, but know that the God who you serve is in the highest place, looking down at him and everybody else right? Know that the God that you serve is the all-powerful God. So as much as this man has power and status, it's only, you know, it's limited. There's, your guides are saying, look deeper into something. This man is a rival. He feels like if you get to, to some sort of place, okay, because it looks like you know, you're connected to some sort of organization, company, institution, there's a contract or or commitments that you have and then the the truth and clarity the the sword he knows this he doesn't want you to come together with something because if you enter the picture he's going to lose people are going to choose you and not him thirty two that's his biggest fear he's hiding it. He's hiding it. He doesn't want people to know about it. He doesn't want, want people to know that he fears you, you know, because he wants to be seen as powerful. But 32 being the moon, the moon is deception. 44. This man is hiding his fear but it's showing through the underhanded things that he's doing to you. The magnifying glass. Thirty-three is the key in discovery. So what this man is doing to you, you can also use it to help you discover that you are connected to something big. You are connected to some sort of organization here with the tower. You're connected. He already knows about it too. That's why he's doing this. 
30 is the lilies, peace and serenity. Look, all you have to do is connect yourself to this place. What is this tower here? Is it a place? Is it a tower skyscraper? Is it an institution? Is it a company? Is it a corporation? Is it an organization? All you have to do is just connect yourself to this place. I think that's the place that God is actually trying to move you to. That Remember how I said earlier, God is wanting you to separate from a place. He's relocating you to a place, of, to a new place that's going to be an upgrade. And then the gift and unexpected income showed up. Yeah. All you have to do. But it feels like wherever you're at currently, they're trying to hold you hostage there. They're trying to keep you hostage there. But you're not held hostage. You're not bound. All you have to do is peacefully, 30 is the lilies, peace and serenity. Get your stuff and go. Okay? Get your stuff and go. 14 being the false trickery. They're hoping that they can get you to stay. The people who are causing this problem for you, they want to get you to stay where you're at. So that you don't move away and go to this place here. That makes perfect sense. That is what, that's what they're trying to hide. That's what they're trying to disguise, right? That's what they're trying to disguise because the mask card is here. Their job is to stall and delay you. They want you to feel like you have to stay where you're at because you have something big in another place. And if you connect yourself to this place, you're going to be receiving some big blessings that puts you in a high place and you have a competitor that doesn't want you to be in this high place along with him. I see exactly what this is. Three, a loss, 34, abundance, 28, hmm. number five. There's something, when I see you in this gentleman number two energy, you're in that king of wands energy. There's something that you want to do. There's something that you want to do. And I believe the Lord is saying he has given you the power and the strength to do it. It's a big, it's some sort of action, right? Because king of wands is all about action. That's why you're here as gentleman number two. Look at how passionate, ambitious he looks. There's something you want to do, some action you want to take, something like that. God is saying, do it. You have the power and the strength to do it, to move forward with this. Forty one, the well. Thirty six. Another thing that I'm seeing here. Hmm. There's something else that's showing up.
anchor. Look deeper. 41 is the well. Look deeper and you'll see that the problem that you feel you're facing isn't even a real problem because there's something about a document, paperwork, or contract that is not real. You may have signed it, but it's not real. They try to make it look official to keep you committed to where you're at, to keep you bound. That's why when I clarify the letter, look, number six, to cloud, a lack of clarity. It could even be that if it is a real contract, it could be that they made mistakes in this contract and there's a loophole. 26 is the, is the book of knowledge. 35 is the anchor. And God made it this way to get you out so that they won't hold you back. There's something here with a contract document paperwork. Even if it is real, there's three, there's three scenarios. It could be that it's not real. It could be that they tried to make it look official. Okay, for some of you, but it's inauthentic, it's illegitimate. For others of you where it is a legitimate contract, they could have made some errors on this contract, in this contract, some errors. So there's loopholes that you can use to get out of it. And then for, for others of you, it could be that, hey, it is a legitimate contract. There is no loopholes, but these people know that you, you have knowledge on what they do. And they don't want you to escalate it and expose them. So they will just terminate the contract to release you out of fear of what you may know about them. For many of you in this case, it's what you know about them that is securing you and preventing them from really restricting you because you have so much knowledge that they would rather just kind of terminate this contract and, you know, release you. Yep, the child. God is always God is always going to make a way. He is the way maker. If one way doesn't work, he'll find another way. They cannot restrict you. Because there because God is limitless, right? There's no limitations to God. You understand? So he's always going to make a way for you. There is a pathway. Your enemies came together to conspire against you and hold you against your will, restrict you. God has paved a pathway for you. I'm going to go ahead and end the reading here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed the message. And if you did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to support the channel. Um, if you're interested in connecting with me more, I will put all of my information in the description box. You're welcome to visit my website. Uh, you're welcome to book a private reading with me. You're welcome to make a donation if you'd like to support the channel more. You're welcome to join the intercessory prayer list for those of you who are facing intense spiritual warfare. Also, for those of you who have joined the intercessory prayer list, I got a few people who have joined it. So uh, please do not forget to email me your contact information because we will be working one-on-one -on -one for three months, okay? So I'm going to need your contact information. Take care, my beautiful people, and God bless you.